the rigorous kind of nature of business is is tough and i think that we got to be careful i think uh some sometimes i'll i'll mention that uh, coaching we'll say being a trainer is one of the easiest ways to be an authority over other people and so just a warning for certain types of personalities who are attracted to this thing it's like water right if you're an egomaniac it's a great place to flex that that ego right for not that much education not that much time not that many barriers to entry uh people will look to you and subvert to you and uh if we're not careful you know you can have a lot of finger pointing and blame uh, away from you as to why your business isn't successful why people are not compliant to your training why people don't buy in uh, etc you know and so i think um you know kind of what i'm getting at is like you know we got to know the shadows of our our role ahead of time so we can kind of just be aware of hey left to my own devices i'm going to think i'm an expert and i'm going to blame anybody who doesn't get it okay well that's that's a, not a strong business play no. Right. You know, and so uh, I'm going to use my IQ, fitness IQ, training IQ to sort of make judgments about others as to why my business or coaching practice is failing or something like that. Um, and I think that goes back to the paradox that we talked about earlier. Right. Be the master and also relate to people who cannot, will not and should not uh, care about the things that you care about right? Your, your, your job is not that your job is to provide them what it is that they need. And you stay over there in your lane as the yeah. movement nerd. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and communicate it in that the communicate movement or coaching or the program or the things you're enthusiastic about to their temperament and their level of understanding yeah. versus getting all jiggy and excited. And then they're just going over their head and okay, yeah. when, when is this conversation going to be over? I got to get back to exercising. Yeah. yeah. That was, uh, do you remember what I said to, I said a couple things, but do you remember what I said to the the room after I was sort of thanking you, you, you wrapped up your whole, your whole, uh, clinic and you know, I sort of, I don't pull this card that often, but it's important. And, and it was a, a humble jab to the room. Because you, you, you know, I, I know you, you well, and I've seen you do your thing several times and you have a masterful ownership of the material that you teach uh, and being asked to do that in a three hour condensed block was, was an effort inside of your, your scope, but it was an effort and everyone in the room, I know that they felt that I know that they're just, they're taken in information at a velocity that they had to respect right and in the moment when you wrapped up i sort of went in front of the room and i acknowledged the material and i said hey how about what's on this board and what we learned this weekend you know clap it out right everybody's like oh fuck yeah you know especially the younger coaches right early in that life cycle it feels like they're standing at the bottom of a mountain looking up and there's no way they're going to get to the top right and i said incredible material and I said, imagine you had that, all of that already. Like everything you heard was just like, a, yep, I already knew it. Yep, for sure, got it. Imagine you had all that information in, in your mind, in your repertoire, which none of you have. That was the jab, which none of you have. Um, imagine you had it all and how flat it would fall on the audience if you couldn't communicate it in the way that it was just communicated. So one, not only do you have so far to go on the IQ part, two, the mastery of the EQ part of delivering a compelling message to get people to care about this is just as important of uh, a responsibility. And I think that was like, you know, a, a right hook, left jab, one, two punch, you know, that I think needs to be felt right of like both in in tandem because um quite frankly uh 
the work that it takes to understand what you know about training and what you shared with the room about training for those three hours um, is uh, necessary, but not sufficient mm -hmm. to grab the room and take them where you want them to go. You know, and I think we're, we might forget that if all we're doing is looking at Instagram or swapping programming notes. Yeah. And I'll, I'll, I'll say this, I'll give all credit to, to two guys, number one, well-born for the opportunity and two, the, the, my mentor, hands down, and gentleman I did a four-month apprenticeship with that is impossible to replicate with the world-class athletes that we were working with and the highest-level military individuals he was working with, but Rafael Ruiz. And I re remember signing what Raf called a pipe pledge, and I still hold myself to that standard and think about it before opportunities like you gave me to speak and simple pipe pledge presence, intelligence quotient, professionalism, and emotional quotient. And that being able to relate to the athletes and ability to recognize and lead the mental and emotional state of not only the individual and a team and the command of an athlete or a team's psychology of discomfort. Like that has nothing to do with writing a program, sets and reps and any of that, but choosing the right loads to drive the emotional response of an individual because when the literal bullets start flying or they're on the, the platform at the pool of the 2016 Olympics or, I mean, just the opportunity to step up to the plate at their high school baseball game, all of that is real. So you're preparing for that emotional response. And I have to model that as a coach. I have to find the right words to, to twist and to jab uh, in a respectful way, but then prepare them for the person who means it across the dugout. So all of these tools I was able to absorb from, from Ariz, but then this is this reverberation of coaching and performance. It's now I sign that pledge. It's my responsibility that every person, coach, athlete, anyone that I work with is to essentially have them sign that pledge just through me.